Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the top eight mistakes beginners make in Python. I've observed these over my years in teaching in high school kids, university students and teachers learning coding for the first time. So if you're starting out in Python, chances are you'll be making them too. Let's start. All right, let's begin. So the first is indentation block membership. So what I mean by that is that, you know, when you write a for loop, what belongs to a for loop is what is indented in front of that for loop. So this program, which is meant to print out a five times table, followed by an 11 times table, has a little wrinkle to it because this 11 times table is actually indented. So that becomes a part of the loop where the five times table is created. So basically this belongs to that for loop, but when you dedent it, have it flat to the back, it will work as follows. So five times table followed by the 11 times table. Let's go look at the next common error. So indentation of tabs and spaces. Now this is a weird one because Right now, the latest versions of Python 3.7 and 3.8 work with really bad indentation. And that is, that is horrifying to me. So this code actually works. It calculates uh, a prime number. So if I enter a number like six, six is not a prime. I enter a seven, seven is a prime. Now indentation here is done with one space and indentation <laughs> in the lower part is done with one tab. So they look drastically different. And if you have like four or five layers of indentation, you're gonna lose all track of what your code is doing. So the right way to approach it is to just press tabs or spaces and remain consistent. Remember PEP8, which is the standard way to use Python everywhere in the world, specifies four spaces. But if you use one tab, and the tab makes four spaces, that's the same thing. Whatever you do, stay consistent with either tabs or spaces. Next up, what do we have? Basic type conversion. Oh yeah. So this is a really, really common uh, beginner mistake. I'm going to show you the file here. So again, I've used the timetable as an example. Now the assumption that a lot of beginners make is that once you actually get a user input, um, let's say the user input is eight. They think that, yeah, it's eight, it's number eight. So when I execute this, I can use the number eight. Um, the assumption here is that the data type is the data type you want because Python does dynamic typing and somehow your data types always work out correct. But no, everything that's created using the input function is a string. So to fix that, you would have to say num equals the int num, or you could have wrapped int around that input both would have worked. So now you want a times table for eight. There you go. So that's it for number three. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, tell the YouTube algorithm, press that like button, subscribe in the bottom right corner. So let's resume with number four. Now that has to do with spelling mistakes. And this is generally people interpreting code in a way that makes sense to them. So let's look at the first mistake we're going to make here. Um, well, actually it refers to the second one immediately, but this is wrong. Actually random is random dot radiant. Now this is turned purple. So some IDEs spell, um, sorry, color code wrong function names. It's rand int, random integer. But again, if you don't know that it's rand int and you're just looking at some code, it, you know, radiant may be a word that comes to mind. I've seen hundreds of students write it. Sometimes they'll put a dot uh, instead of a comma. So a full stop instead of a comma is also quite common. But also, um, if you write, if guess double equals random, which is the correct thing, double equals is checking if the uh, two things are going to be the same and then it evaluates to true if that's the case, false if it's not, single equals is an assignment. But if somebody's looking at code for the first time, they'll see the double equals and go, no, 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 it's meant to be single. So again, don't interpret anything um, and just try to copy things exactly as they are and watch out 
for mixing up the equal signs and function names. Okay, what's next? Okay, so next we've got uh, module names. And this is actually uh, quite common. Most often it happens with something like Python turtle. So let's say like you've imported turtle and students end up saving their file name as turtle.py. So no longer will the module work, but it can even happen in the browser, like in this example. So I've created some random float right here and I called it random. Now, since that float is called random, that program you just saw before that guesses a number one to hundred, well, it's no longer going to work because it's referring to this float instead of this library. And that's very, very fixable. All you need to do is make sure you never ever call a variable the same name as a package. And there you have it. Um, everything works. All right. On to the next one. So here we have the function having the same name as the variable. Very, very similar to number five. You begin using functions. So you have some even test. That's a function and it tests if a number is even. Super simple. There is the code. And then again, for whatever reason, maybe it's a big program, maybe you're not really concentrating or listening to music or some podcast or something, but you end up using that even test as a variable. And all of a sudden, it just doesn't work because it refers to this some string instead of the function you've created because this is the last time even test was um, assigned. Basically, that function becomes redundant and not callable. Again, you change this name, to something else and everything is going to go ahead and work. All right, on to number seven, um, concatenation with strings and integers. Yes, very, very basic, but very, very common. So um, usually early on in the Python journey, uh, students learn how to manipulate some basic data. They're going to use the uh, mathematical operators like plus times, divided, etc., And they want to add an integer to a string. And for example, they go, what's your favorite number? I say eight, and this will not work. They used to add strings to strings. Why won't this work? Well, it won't work because that's an integer in the string and you just can't add them. It's like you can't if you have an apple and an apple, you have two apples. If you have an apple and an orange, you can't have two of anything. You have an apple and an orange. So a couple of ways to fix it. Usually um, they'll use a comma and that allows you to actually put two things on a print statement that are different data types. Or you could stick with a plus and just convert the integer to a string. So that way works as well. Okay, last but not least, list copying not working properly. So this has happened to me, I'm sure like if, if you've already done list in Python, this has happened to you. So let's have a look at that example, comment out, comment in, and we've got list copying. So you've got two lists. So you've got numbers here and you want to make a copy of numbers and now you print lists before, but now you just change numbers too. So numbers two should have a six, but numbers should just remain one to five. And all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, they're, they're both the same. What's going on? Well, only one list exists in computer memory. And that list has actually been uh, pointed to by these two variable names. So if you want to make a copy, like a separate list that's identical to the first one, you just need to say dot copy. And this is a built-in method. And all of a sudden that's gonna fix your problem. The original list is gonna remain as it is. And when you've appended six to numbers two, that will be actually appended to numbers two. So just to reiterate, this is the only way um, you are going to make another list that is the same as a list you've had before. You have to use the copy method. So that about sums it up. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So something you could do from here after looking at some basic mistakes, 
There's a free entire Python course on YouTube and there is a tutorial about guess the number game which we've seen snippets of code from. Check them out and if you'd like to learn Python directly from me check out my website link here. Bye.